840 right now and oh it is time to visit with our friend Rika Basu from the Des Moines Register and it sounds like Rika uh, you are the uh, the bearer of some breaking news. I am the bearer of some good news indeed. So there was an election a special school board election in Trainer last night and you know Trainer is where um, there has been all of this sexual abuse and oh, allegations right. of cover up and corruption I've, I've been writing I wrote a series about that recently. So there was a special school board election for an open seat and one of the two candidates who was running is a woman by the name of Heidi Gutau Fox has been very much in the vanguard of trying to hold the school district accountable mm -hmm. for the sexual abuse and trying to hold the superintendent accountable while other school board members tend to have caped. She won a resounding victory last night in the election, which is fantastic. They had higher turnout by more than double than they have ever had before in this race. So you knew people were paying attention. People were paying attention. There was something like 800 and votes, uh, 805 votes were cast last night, yesterday, compared to 362, which was the highest they had ever had in the past. So yeah. this is really important because it shows that citizens there, residents, members of the community and the school district are paying attention and mm -hmm. are planning to hold their school district accountable for how they treat students. And there have been a number of, of um, victim advocates who have not been heard and who have been really sidelined and treated very poorly in that community and by the school board and its attorney. And, but now things are gonna start to turn around. Now I think we're gonna start to see some changes. So this is, this is really the victory at the ballot box that we've been hoping for. Wonderful. There you go. Yes. So that's good news out of a small town here in Iowa. That is absolutely great. And news. also it looks like some good news that we uh, learned about uh, yesterday. It looks like another town here in Iowa has won for the best places to live in 2016. West Des Moines, Iowa. West Des Moines, Iowa. fourth on the wow. list from money. So magazine. what was number one? Number one was Columbia, Maryland. Never heard of it. Yeah, I've never heard of it either. Couldn't be that great to live if none of us has Columbia, heard of it. Columbia, Maryland was number well one. Kept secret. Eden Prairie, Minnesota, number two, and Plano, Texas, number three. Well, that's very interesting because there's a segue here to the topic of my column in today's paper, which is um, about West Des Moines. And one of the things that makes it a great place to live, in the view of some of its residents, and also a source of pride and boasts for the city itself, which is that it has sidewalks. It has a lot of really good sidewalks that allow pedestrians to move about comfortably free from concerns about being killed by and safely cars mm -hmm. and safely mm -hmm. exactly and it boasts of that on the city's website on the other hand guess who doesn't have sidewalks Windsor Heights which is pretty close which borders on West Des Moines mm -hmm. Windsor Heights does not have sidewalks and it and um, a number of people there are content to keep it that way they think that sidewalks are really for the spoiled and entitled yuppies who are moving in and demanding all kinds of special concessions from them. Well, there has to be more than just that reason. They said one of the we women who spoke at a school board, I mean at a, um, I'm sorry, at the city council meeting on Monday night said, you know, they, these people who want sidewalks should go to West Des Moines and Des Moines where they belong. Where they belong, because <laughs> why do they belong there? there? They. Because there's a pro sidewalk movement. No, I mean obviously I'm minimizing and making fun <laughs> of this, but there is something a little bizarre to the whole controversy that so many people can be so irate about the simple idea of making a city more pedestrian friendly. And this is at a time when you know we're worried about about the use of fossil fuels and climate change. We're worried about fitness and people being obese and not getting enough enough exercise. We want to create an atmosphere where people feel comfortable to walk around and feel safe walking around and taking their kids to school or kids you know taking themselves to school mm -hmm. and not having to worry about dodging traffic and yet there is this resistance among some longtime residents who feel I guess that since they you know maneuvered the streets without sidewalks when they were growing up why should new people come in and demand these things well now, let's face it Iowans hate change they hate think, change, yeah. and you do have these uh, uh, residents who said we survived just fine, so now why do we have to pay to put in sidewalks? And actually, and that is a legitimate point, because for some people it could be an economic hardship. I was going to say, yeah, because this, this is probably the reason well, people are most upset. It was the reason, but then, but the city council appointed in Windsor Heights appointed a panel which has come up with all kinds of alternatives, including, you know, taxpayer funding, so that individual homeowners, property owners, are not going to have to pay for the sidewalks, and there will be a fund for repair and maintenance of those sidewalks that can help people of low income make those adjustments. So 
it's really not so much about money. It's about old versus new. I think you hit on it exactly. It's a, it's a reluctance to change. But I think in certain situations, and as I said in my, I'll take that. There you go. No, <laughs> I, <laughs> no, the analogy that I made in my column is, you know, people who grew up with outhouses would probably tell you also that they did just fine with them. <laughs> but the fact is, now that you have indoor plumbing and toilets, would they prefer to stick with the outhouses? No. But when see, you have, to, you have to realize those people that um, they don't want the sidewalks, A, there's the initial expense of the sidewalk that we, we talked about, then yep. there's the maintenance of that sidewalk, and there's also the upkeep of the sidewalk and maintaining it during inclement weather, for example. There'll right. be some rules that go into effect that you're going to have to shovel right. if there's a certain amount of snow and right, keep the pathway clear. The same could be said of streets when it snows. I mean, it's either but you the, don't the have, snow you don't is have a responsibility to clean off the street that's in front of your house, though. That's the city's responsibility, but your sidewalk, if it's on your property, you have to take care of that sidewalk in front of your house. That is true. And, you know, in, on my street, a bunch of residents have banded together and hired a company very cheaply so that each of us pays, you know, less than $100 a year to get that are because we live on a sort of a back alley to get that road cleared. It can be done. There are ways that you can negotiate it. But the point is, you know, cities are moving in the direction of being pedestrian friendly. That's what keeps cities thriving. You really can't call yourself a city if you don't have pedestrian friendly mechanism to get around. And there are young people moving in there. And, and Windsor Heights should be happy about that. It should be happy that young people want to raise young families there. You know, that contributes to the tax base. But mm -hmm. these are little things that you can do to make a city more friendly to newcomers and and I think you know the residents of Windsor Heights really need to get with the program on that it's such a little thing to ask for it's a lovely city otherwise and you know what some of the responses is well um, they should regulate traffic then the city should do more to regulate traffic do you know what the traffic <laughs> speed limit is in Windsor, Windsor Heights? Heights vice is known throughout the state of Iowa right mm -hmm. 25 miles an hour mm -hmm. through the I mean come on that's unnatural have you ever driven at 25 miles an hour especially when you come <laughs> yeah, from, <laughs> from, from the other side yes, of the city when you, I'm have told to, and you have to take the shortcut going to the hockey arena for example right through there there, you have and that it. is a that is a trap and a half. It is, yeah. it is. And so you know, as I wrote, when you're that trying might be to the answer. What? That might be Hockey your answer. Arena? Because what? no, no. If you have sidewalks, people <laughs> yeah. will walk and not take their car through that area. That's a really good point. And exactly. then they'll be losing some income. But it exactly. sounds like it's moving towards the direction after the latest meetings that the sidewalks will. The city, yes, the happen. city council has voted in support of sidewalks, but you know the the. The nose presented a petition with something like 900 signatures on Monday, which mm -hmm. compares to the 300 signatures they had got for yays early on. So they have gotten organized. Right. I don't know where things go from here. I mean, well, yes, it's, it's, it's a goal. Probably, it's supposed to happen. It sounds uh, silly, but it's probably going to take a push from the, the side that says yes to, yep. to get out and do the same type of thing. Yep. As, as natural of a progression as it sounds, it may need to happen. Exactly. I mean, the good thing is, you know, people are showing civic pride and turning out for these meetings, mm -hmm. and that's lovely. You want to see p people come out and vote in local and school board elections. You want them to address their city council with their grievances. I'm just questioning this particular grievance. I, it is amazing to see how people, how passionate they are. I know. About sidewalks. But like you said, whatever your passion might be, uh, you know, you have the right to speak it. All right. So p check out the complete article in today's Des Moines Register. A little it, hard to miss. It, yeah, can, you, red can you headlines. see this? Uh, and that's going to be on page 13A. And you can decide which side of the street are you on today. Which side are you on? There Remember you that go. protest so, song? Perfect. Yeah. All right. Wonderful. Well, great job. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. Right it, it is 849 right now, and we will be right back. You are watching CW Iowa Live. When we come back, how about an iPhone for dogs? Mm-hmm. Well, one special dog. We'll tell you about that dog next.